and welcome back to Your Town TV and the Arts of the Answer segment. And today we are celebrating our Champions of the Arts 2019. We just had a wonderful conversation with Denise from Open Ground Studios as well as Bonnie, who's one of the artist members there. And we are going to be talking in just a minute with Juan Carlos Gonzalez, who is our luminary, one of my favorite categories of champions. Because to us at the Arts Council, the luminary is the one whose light shines so brightly that others find their own way. And this is a really big deal, and this is a big story uh, about Juan Carlos that I'm really eager for us all to share. So um, thank you again for being with us, and Juan Carlos, thank you for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. It's for so, so me. great to have you here today. Thank you. So Juan Carlos, I know that part of your story is that you, did you grow up here and then you mm -hmm. went to San Diego for school, but then you found your way back. Yes. And I have mm -hmm. to say, when I was growing up, my main concern was getting out. And I did, <laughs> not here, you know, I grew up in, mm -hmm. in, in Lynn, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it just was a teenage thing maybe, just like, I, I gotta get out. Mm -hmm. and, and I never quite went back, but now there's this awesome arts program mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and so it always makes me think of you because I just admire your capacity to you went you you did your thing in San Diego from there you could have gone anywhere mm -hmm. but you came back here mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what drew you back yes um, I grew up in Salinas in a beautiful art community and I've been part of uh, the uh, first night Monterey in the uh -huh. mid 90s so I grew up in it and I felt very blessed um, when I went to San Diego State, I studied uh, arts, liberal arts, with emphasis in studio arts. And I always wanted to make an um, impact in my community. And I realized that coming back to Salinas was going to be very impactful because... So you must have been pretty young at the time, right, to have those visions of yes. serving your community, coming back, doing, <laughs> going out in order mm. to come back stronger. Yes. Um, so That's I amazing. started when I was in high school, actually, when I was in high school. Wow. Um, I was already in, involved in the art community, uh -huh. and I grew up thinking, I want to go to an art school, and I want, would like to come back. That is amazing. Uh -huh. That is so amazing, to have that vision so young, <laughs> so young, and, and to really do that. Yes. So let's uh -huh. talk about how you've been manifesting all of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like I've known you for so, so <laughs> long, and in so many ways, and mm -hmm. um, I think we might have first met with the first when you were working in Greenfield. Yes, and uh -huh. with Kira Corser, mm -hmm. and who, who really led the Arts Council mm -hmm. to Greenfield and mm -hmm. said, hey, we should be doing something mm -hmm. here. And she right. was a community foundation, right? So yes, uh -huh. all the work that they were doing there. And I remember that um, the, the group, it, we started mm -hmm. in the Greenfield Public Library, mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. recreation space, yes, and then uh -huh. it was um, some people, dozens of people, and then all of a sudden, like, 90 and overflowing. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, I remembered. <laughs> Yes, when I came back to Salinas, I saw the need for like creative, uh, creative space that is safe for young people to express themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also saw the need for people to have a voice. Yes. And I wanted to be that voice. I wanted to be the resource for artists in, in our community to use art as a portal for a voice. Yeah. And um, so what I started doing, I just started uh, gathering uh, different artists uh, from the community. Uh, mostly graffiti artists when I came back from, from San Diego. And what year was that? It was uh, 2009 and oh, yeah. 2010. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I remember that I got a few assignments through the Arts Council uh -huh. to work in South County. Yeah. And I remember seeing s like children, uh, ma parents and youth together. Yeah. And they were doing uh, paintings and arts and crafts. And I just saw how they were having a wonderful time, yeah. but I also saw that they were having, they were really creating the community that we all want, yeah. a safe space where we can create and express ourselves. So I, um, I have a vision that, um, that I could do this in Salinas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I founded Urban Arts Collaborative around 2012, and yeah. previous to that, I started thinking about doing all of this. Yeah. Uh, so that's when I founded Urban Arts Collaborative in 2012. And what is the Urban Arts Collaborative all about mm -hmm. now? You've had different places that you were in and different things that you've been doing. Um, what, is, what is the shape of it nowadays? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Urban Arts Collaborative started as a movement of graffiti artists mm -hmm. and eventually evolved because uh, it's an Urban Arts Collaborative of many different artists with many different disciplines. 
So when I uh, when I start doing this work, I of course it's after spending so much time with with artists, you learn about their lives, you learn about the issues that they really care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the issues that we really care and we wanted to we were concerned about was the. Um, that graffiti was not seen as an art form, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and where graffiti was further criminalized. Um, and I also noticed that our community, people of color, were the most disenfranchised. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so what I wanted to do is um, work with the city of Salinas and the city council um, to have a policy that uh, impacts positively the lives of many people. And we, it took us about four or five years to do it, but we eventually did. So now Urban Arts Collaborative um, paved the way for the city of Salinas to have an art ordinance. And I, as a result of that, I also became an arts commissioner for the city of Salinas just very recently. And that, thank you for your amazing, amazing leadership. It just goes on and on. And can you tell us so that other people know as well, mm -hmm. um, you did a lot of work through the Building Healthy Communities. Mm -hmm. And can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about mm -hmm. that? And um, are you still connected in some way? Mm -hmm. uh, I know things have changed a lot mm -hmm. in the last Mm -hmm. couple of years as the, the um, building how the communities is, has shifted, but mm -hmm. um, can you just talk about what it was like for you to be immersed in all that? Yes, for me, uh, the, the arts are the answer, and I want mm -hmm. the arts all integrated into everything because I think we make everything better, and it seems like you had a mm -hmm. really great opportunity there, but they had mm -hmm. an opportunity that you were there. Yes, of course, uh, the arts are the answer. The <laughs> arts are really the answer. They. Um, what happened was that I got an invitation by the California Endowment in 2009, mm -hmm. Uh, and I joined their, their team, and they know that I'm an artist, a visual artist, a community-based artist, and I start doing a lot of uh, house meetings, community meetings, where we hold about 200 over, wow. or even 300 people yeah. in the same place. Yeah. When we start doing this uh, Building Healthy Communities Initiative, uh, funded by the California Endowment, uh, what, we, what we said was that there was more participation of people when there was art present, and there were our engagement. Mm -hmm. So um, I also, my nature is to always lead and you know be involved in, <laughs> um, in community-based artwork yeah. and that impacts community. And so what happened was that um, um, as we were move, moving with the Building Healthy Communities, which it was uh, a sun setting uh, this next year. Yeah. So um, what happened was that in 2015, uh, Lauren Padilla Valverde, who's the program manager for yeah. the California Endowment, she gave me the opportunity to fully fund Urban Arts Collaborative. And uh, as, as a result of that, I felt, we felt more empowered yeah. to take Urban Arts Collaborative to the next level. So we um, partnered with Action Council of Monterey yeah. County. Yeah. They are our fiscal sponsor. Okay. And we uh, wanted to have this partnership because we would like artists to spend their time doing the art, reaching out to the community, yeah. uh, making this social change that we want to do in our community. And uh, Action Council takes care of all of administrative work yeah. that we would like them to do. Yeah. And um, so with uh, Building Healthy Communities give us, there was an opportunity for them to have uh, legitimacy in our community because mm -hmm. you know the artists are local artists and I grew up in Salinas. So you are um, building the bridges for them. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes and I also during during this work that I've been doing with Building Healthy Communities we still part of the Building Healthy yeah. Communities Initiative. Oh, okay. uh, we, um, we still uh, do partnerships and collaborations. Um, for instance, um, we have Salina Ciclovia coming up mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. October 7th. And uh, the reason that Salina Ciclovia became very, very uh, successful, it is because Urban Arts Collaborative helped in getting youth to be the leaders, to be oh, yeah. the ones who can lead these activities. Yeah. And um, in our first year with uh, Building Healthy Communities under the Ciclovia, uh, in 2015, we did our first uh, tactical urbanism project in East Salinas. So every year, we the city closed the streets in East Salinas yeah. for Urban Arts Collaborative to come together and paint a, a mural on site. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's, it's really big, isn't it? It is a. It is very big. It's <laughs> huge. Um, I can't remember the dimensions, but yeah. it takes. It basically covers the intersection of East Salinas and Wood Street. Uh huh. And um, it is. 
we have about participants are all the way from five years old all the way to 60 yeah. years okay. old yeah. Yeah. and um, people come and they not necessarily need to have experience in painting yeah. because we have on-site artists who work together with the, yeah. with the community so they can be part of this transformation. Wow. Uh, the mural is not too meant to be uh, permanent, uh -huh. it's meant to be temporary, yeah. but it serves as a conversation for the city and community members to have a tangible conversation about the arts. Is there a theme that usually goes? There? Yes, um, so the theme that we, that we have um, initiated uh, three years ago was the uh, flower mandala. Uh -huh. So a flower mandala it is a perfect uh, symbol of what we want our community to be. Uh -huh. uh, we want everyone, regardless of their age and color, to be part of this arts movement. Uh -huh. And um, w also the flower means growing uh -huh. and also has, um, it keeps growing. Mandalas keeps growing and growing. Uh -huh. And it also invites everyone to be part of it. So that's why we I intended to have a theme, which is the mandala flower. I am so, so excited to be celebrating you, mm -hmm. Juan Carlos, mm -hmm. in this next Champions of the mm -hmm. Arts Gala, February 2nd, Monterey High. Um, learn more at artsformc.org slash champions. Mm -hmm. And to learn more about Urban Arts Collaborative, where do people go? Mm -hmm. To learn more about Urban Arts Collaborative, we have a website. It's called www.urbanartsco.org. We are also providing, uh, we also have partnerships with the migrant education right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We meet at Santa Rita School every yeah. Monday evening Wonderful. for about three hours. And we do our uh, and we also do health and wellness, so we meditate, we do some Great. breathing exercise oh. before we do the art. Okay. And then once we do the creation, then we spend a few minutes doing um, a healthy meal, like a healthy snack that yeah. includes organic vegetables and fruits. I know, that's a really big piece. So mm -hmm. there's so much more to talk about. I'm afraid we're out of time right now, but mm -hmm. we will have you back before the Champions mm -hmm. if we can. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And we also want to celebrate your own beautiful artwork and Thank everything you. that you're doing mm -hmm. um, with Urban Arts Collaborative. It, in addition to the community building and all the things, that the actual artwork you're all producing mm -hmm. is just stunning. It's mm -hmm. just really beautiful mm -hmm. and really powerful. Mm -hmm. So Thank thanks again for your leadership, mm -hmm. and, and we can't wait to celebrate you properly on February 2nd. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks, Carlos. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Urban Arts Collaborative is a, is a cadre of uh, artists, uh, young artists who live in Salinas and who use art to transform their city and to use it for, um, for creative expression and critical thinking. A lot of our food justice work is uh, focused around community, uh, being around the table, understanding the lack of resources on uh, food that really reflects uh, our community. A lot of our food is uh, either produced in a monocrop, really not understanding the land or understanding how to create a, a community that's having that benefit of uh, eating something that they can afford. Urban Arts Collaborative works with uh, different youth throughout the city, uh, specifically with the LGBT community. We we meet with them and we also create safe spaces for them. Uh, we are going to be part of the LGBT um, this month for El Grito and also uh, the LGBT uh, Salinas Ballet Pride. We also work with um, formerly incarcerated youth, uh, the Juvenile Hall and uh, Rancho Cielo. Are you going to help? You can do anything else, yeah, like which one you What's cool about UAC is that it's just an amazing organization that any artist can go into. You can go in there with very, like a very little skill set or a very developed skill set and find where you can um, help us out or help yourself out as well. It's very much an exchange of knowledge in, in the space and I really appreciate what it's done for me. Um, the different experiences it's allowed me to have where, you know, traveling to places that I wouldn't travel to, to attend different conferences, meeting new people who have all different kinds of work, like basically work um, areas, they work in different fields, but it's all connected in, in one way, shape or form. And I think that it's amazing that art can be that bridge. So we need to get those in and so you could get it reviewed before Wednesday, August the 31st. So get them in tomorrow so you could review them the day after. 
The reason why Urban Arts Collaborative is so important to me is because without it, I would be so lost with my life right now. It gave me so many experiences that I've, I would have never had. I strongly emphasize the trainings because they really did help me grow as a person and realize like the, how important it is to give back to my community, not only through like art and healthy foods, but just to be there and hear them out and advocate, strongly advocate for the residents here and also the youth. We'd have several of these and then um, I, was, I was thinking as the a be... youth organizer in the community, <laughs> I felt that I wanted to participate more with the local nonprofits and Urban Arts Collaborative really stood out for me. So when JC noticed the movement that I was working with, he basically gave me an opportunity for me to develop professionally and personally. In short, he was able to uplift me as a person and increase my capacity. Let's give him a round of applause, please.